Hello and welcome, Dr. Ibrahim Haddad. Welcome to this uh, Data and AI uh, Fundamentals class. Thank you, Adrian. I'm happy to be here and thank you for having me on, on this chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's an honor to have you here. Uh, please introduce yourself. What's your role? So uh, my name is Ibrahim Haddad. I am the general manager of Aleph AI and Data. We are a nonprofit organization within the Linux Foundation. And our goal is to support uh, open source projects in the AI and data domain and sustain them and accelerate innovation within that space. And in my role, I'm responsible for supporting our member organizations. We have over 50 member organizations in LFA and data, uh, supporting and bringing in new projects into the foundation. And as of today, we have 41 technical projects in the foundation, and we have an active six committees that focus on different aspects of AI and data. And my role is basically to participate, organize, and uh, synchronize all of these efforts and bring in new members, bring in new project, and help support that open source AI ecosystem into a positive growth. Amazing. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So in this class with the students, we cover uh, the role of the, of the foundation. We explain a little bit, and uh, it's a project under the Linux Foundation. But what's the dynamic no, of an uh, open source foundation like this? How does it work? So I think the primary goal of a foundation like ours is to provide a neutral hosting for projects. So typically, you have organizations open sourcing or creating new open source projects. And with that, they pretty much have control on the project, on the trademark, on the infrastructure of the projects, on the decision making, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I think from my perspective, foundations play a critical role because when a project move into a foundation or becomes hosted in foundation, we basically provide a neutral hosting ground for the project. We provide uh, a fair and open governance model. So not a single company can control or take over the project. Mm -hmm. Instead, every company act when the project on its technical steering committee will be just one vote. And we provide a neutral hosting for all the project assets. That includes the trademark, which becomes owned by the foundation. It includes uh, the IT infrastructure, it includes GitHub organization, all project accounts on, for instance, social media, a cloud provider accounts, um, and anything related to the project becomes owned by the foundation and managed by the foundation. And with that, we also have financial responsibilities in terms of, you know, spending on the projects in different areas so that the project is not reliant on commercial entity for its survival. So from that perspective, the foundation is really critical. It is a neutral host for the project. It takes care of all of its needs. It, it supports its growth. Uh, and we are nonprofit. We don't uh, have any commercial aspect. So we are 100% neutral. And um, our whole existence is in support of, of these projects. This sounds like an amazing support system no? for any open source project to keep developing and to get the resources they need to, to grow. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look at the history of the Linux Foundation, we started with Linux as the first project in the early 2000s. And today we host over 2000 projects. So you can imagine the amount of work uh, that happens at the Linux Foundation and ensuring that critical projects in the open source ecosystem at large are sustainable longer term away from any commercial pressures. Indeed. Yeah. And how was the evolution? Because on the, on the class, the learners have uh, seen that uh, the LF uh, Data and AI Foundation started from a merger, no? Two different foundations. How was that? So we actually started in um i think march yeah march of 2018 uh and the the way we came together is a number of companies within the next foundation came to us and said 
you know, we like what you're doing with cloud native computing foundation in that space. We like what we're doing in the hyperledger. We like what you're doing on the security front on X, Y, and Z. And we're very interested in having a foundation under the Linux foundation that is completely focused on AI and data. Uh, and remember back then we were not called AI and data. We were called deep learning, LF deep learning. So <laughs> at that point, 2018, we launched the foundation and we called it LF for Linux Foundation Deep Learning. And we we're only nine companies and we only had one project as a starting point. And over time, so we moved from LF Deep Learning to LF AI for LF Artificial Intelligence Foundation to signal to organizations, to the communities, to the really the industry at large that our focus is not only deep learning, it is artificial intelligence. And during that time, we were also building up our data portfolio. We had approximately one third of our projects in the foundation that are data specific. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, we had ODPI, which is kind of an umbrella foundation at the Linux Foundation focused on data. Mm -hmm. So we discovered a lot of synergies and a lot of common interests. And at that point, we came together. So ODPI moved to become part of the LFAI. The member companies in ODPI became members of LFAI. The projects became projects of LFAI. And we changed names again from LFAI to LFAI and data to signal the importance of data within the ecosystem. So today we are LFA and data. I don't think we're going to go through any other rebranding. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, it's really a lot of effort, you know. So, but we became experts at it because we've done it twice. Um, so we have 41 projects and approximately, you know, 15, maybe 17 projects are data projects. So today we serve um, organizations and open source communities that are looking to support the AI and data ecosystem, that are looking to uh, support the project and the ecosystem and uh, bring in kind of stability and minimize fragmentation across the, the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Seems to be like a very smart move, like all this evolution of the foundation, like starting from the experimentation of deep learning and then focusing on both uh, AI and data very aligned with the evolution of the industry, no? the maturity, the level of adoption, and the problematics on the, on the organizations. They are dealing with all the data initiatives and they are experimenting with AI. That's very bold. And uh, you had to choose, I know you have a lot of projects, but you had to choose one or two that are the highlights, that are the most important projects or the more representative of what you are doing. Uh, could you choose one or two? <laughs> Uh, this this question will put me in a lot of troubles with a lot of my projects because <laughs> I'm responsible for 41 projects and you know the the right answer is all of them are equal you know in my eye and, and this is this is why we have the foundation right so yeah. you know projects come to us and all projects get the same treatment the same access to people mm -hmm. same access to staff. Uh, same access to services, you know, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. And instead, what I will showcase is, you know, some success stories of, you know, projects that come to us. Uh, for instance, uh, Orovot project, which is a um, uh, training framework. Mm -hmm. So Orovot project uh, joined us, and it was a project that was created and open sourced by Uber. And at that point, there was just Uber active in the project. Mm -hmm. So the project came to us under incubation and within 18 months, uh, the project uh, graduated. And basically at that point, Orovod as a project had approximately you know, 15 to 17 companies that are actively contributing to it, you know, up from just Uber. Uh, and it had a functioning open governance. They had a technical steering committee that consisted of uh, about seven or eight companies that included NVIDIA, IBM, Google, uh, uh, Meta or Facebook, mm -hmm. um, Intel, and a number of other companies. And so the project basically moved from being an Uber founded project to a community project uh, with a steering committee that represents the largest contributors to the project. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and today, I think it has north of eight, nine, ten thousand GitHub stars. I, you know, I lost track. Uh, extremely thriving project, and really, uh, the um, the the master project within that training category. Uh, similarly, if you look at our landscape, which is available from uh, the website l dot lfaidata dot foundation. Uh, you will realize that a lot of our projects start as small projects, but they show a lot of promise. And our goal as a foundation is to support the community of that project to grow it, to increase the number of contributors and increase the number of adopters of the project, which in turn will make these adopters contributors and make the project kind of a de facto uh, project within that specific category. So a lot of our projects join us in the incubation and after a specific period of incubation once they meet the criteria of graduation which is a certain you know, i believe five companies actively contributing to the project uh, a minimum level of github stars a certain you know co a consistent commit flow uh, so basically what that means is we don't like to see like spike in commits and mm -hmm. then drop and mm -hmm. then nothing and then spikes we'd like to see high level uh, of commit flow consistent across all, at least the past year of the project. Uh, and there are some other criteria. And once the project meets these criteria, they graduate. And graduation basically signal to the market that this project uh, is uh, of high maturity today. It is adopted by uh, a lot of organizations. It is deployed in large scales in a lot of organizations. Uh, and what we actually try to do with our project is publicize on the GitHub uh, documentation, you know, what companies are using these projects. So some of these projects that we have, they have over 50 companies that we're aware of that are deploying mm -hmm. these projects uh, in commercial setting. Um, so, and that tells you really the importance of the work the foundation is doing, where as an organization, you're often than not, not, you're not going to trust adopting a project for your product and services if there's in this, a single entity controlling the destiny of that product. But once a project moves to a foundation and uh, becomes accessible to everyone under an open governance where the foundation actually owns the assets of the project, it gives confidence to the organization that, hey, this is not, for instance, an IBM project. This is not an Uber project. This is not a Microsoft project. But this is a Linux Foundation project, and all of these companies are participants in it. And if I put a lot of effort, if I contribute, my developers will become committers. They will become mm -hmm. eligible for seat on the steering committee, and that will give me a path to leadership in the project. And this is really uh, the beauty of it, of how the system works. Yeah, it's uh, like the future of uh, data and AI based on open source communities and this kind of dynamics. Like so. Uh, not intuitive that we could say like a company is willing to give uh, their code and to put it out there for the community to continue evolving, but it has this effect on the community and the adoption from other companies and collaboration. And that's uh, critical for uh, data and artificial intelligence. Correct. And I would like to add the, the importance of innovation in that process where, you know, individually, as people, you know, myself, yourself, others, um, and similarly organizations, you know, they have limited uh, amount of, you know, if you wish intelligence in that sense, or, uh, you know, ability to produce innovation. But when you combine, due to the fact that these projects are under open governance and are accessible to everyone without a single control point on the project, that is basically an invitation for others to come in and participate. And that makes amazing impact on the innovation multiplication. So when I work, I'm able to produce this much. But when I collaborate with you, Adrian, I'm able to gather with you to produce this much. And when all of these organizations compound their resources and efforts in the single project, the multiplier effect is just incredible. And we see that in the projects where a project comes in into the foundation uh, and then, you know, they have one or two organizations active in it. And then we see their history across the past, you know, one year or 18 months within the foundation 
it's um, it's almost linear. You know, yeah. the number of commits, the number of participants, the number of contributors. Um, so the everything what you said is is really correct. And you know, I just wanted to add the the importance of that environment to allow uh, multiple innovations to come together. That's amazing. Putting all, all this talent and organizations together and getting this multiplier effect. Uh, so the impact is very clear for the organizations. Um, you know, our learners, they are coming from different backgrounds, uh, more or less technical. They are learning about uh, AI and data. Do you have any kind of advice for community involvement and opportunities that they could uh, take in order to collaborate and to learn and to contribute? Yeah. Um, so I think from an advice perspective, I would, I would just give kind of one piece of advice and it is, you know, don't be intimidated, right? A lot of these projects are really complex and they involve, you know, dozens, hundreds, and in some cases, thousands of active participants coming from uh, you know, dozens and hundreds of organization. And it's very easy to get lost, you know, meaning if, if you're coming in and you want to participate um, into one of these projects, um, it's it's very hard to be, um, to, you know, you, you'll have that feeling that you're kind of uh, overwhelmed because there's a lot of activities and, you know, there's uh, a large code bases and so on. And I think what I would tell people is kind of don't be intimidated. Uh, first, you know, join the mailing list of the project, uh, join the Slack channel, and for the first month or so, just try to learn, you know, who is active in the project, what is the project trying to achieve, how they're trying to achieve that, what are the ongoing major uh, implementation activities that are happening, what are the major bugs or issues in GitHub that people are working on, and basically for the first month or so, try to build uh, that global understanding of the project. And at that point, you kind of compare that to your level of skills and try to identify areas where you can contribute, you know, little by little. You know, a lot of the maintainers and contributors and, uh, you know, very active people in the projects today, they were not that uh, the first day they joined the project. Most people join the project like you do. They start from uh, the beginning. They learn about the project. They identify areas where, uh, their skills can contribute into the project and they start building on it. And a lot of people really start, you know, solving really small problems, you know, uh, small issues, fixing small bugs, making little code improvements. And with that process, they learn and they also build confidence to do bigger things. Exactly. And it takes months really uh, to get there. Um, but it is a process and everyone goes through it. When I was a developer, when I was a developer in, in my early career, I, I followed the same process. So, um, you know, don't be intimidated, learn about the project and try to find a place where you can contribute and start small and, and grow with that. That's wonderful advice. And I think that it illustrates the journey of uh, everyone in open source communities and even more yeah. for uh, AI and data communities where everything is so new and we keep learning, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you very much, Dr. Haddad. This is uh, very illustrative, both the overview and the advice. I think that uh, our learners are very happy to hear that. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you everyone. And for the people watching this video, uh, I hope you find this very useful. Uh, and I invite you to uh, visit our website and my personal website, because I actually maintain a catalog of a lot of uh, publication in relation to open source, in relation to AI and data, that can be a bunch of resources available for you to, to discover as well. Thank you and happy learning. Have a nice day. Thank you. Okay.